I was once asked, how do you know God is real? And to be honest with you, that drew me up short. I mean, I had to pause and think about it. How did I know God was real? That is what we're going to explore here in this video. Now, my name is Charles, and this is a simple, not shallow video. A video for those who want a deeper faith, not a confusing one. And that is what our name is all about, keeping faith in Christ simple. Well, simple enough that a child like myself can understand it, and yet not so shallow that when the storms of life hit, our faith is forced to run aground. See, we need a faith that is like a very good cup of coffee. Simple, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. <laughs> That's good coffee. So here we go. Now it has often been observed that science cannot prove that there is a God. Now it is also true that it cannot prove that there is no God. In fact, science can do nothing in establishing the reality or the non-existence of God. But that's a topic for a different video. I only mention it now because as I was thinking on this and about what type of proof I should be looking for, well, I began wondering, was I looking for physical or scientific proofs? You know, such as those given for the existence of gravity and its effect upon things on this planet, or for the earth being a big blue ball spinning around the sun? Or is proof for a relational God better found in terms that are non-physical, that are non-scientific. That is, should proof of a relational God be sought in terms of the relational? So where did I go looking for proofs? Well, the very first place that I went looking for proof was in my Bible. And the very first passage that I found was in John chapter 8, which says, if you remain in my word, then you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So, if we continue in His Word, reading it, pondering it, thinking about it, about it, mulling it over, and acting on what we learn there, then we are truly His disciples, and we will know the truth. Now, at first glance, that might look like a circular argument, meaning that we are trying to make our belief the proof. That we are saying we prove God to be real because we believe Him to be real. Which is truly no proof at all. And yet, when we look a little closer at what the Bible is actually saying, we see that this is not what it is saying. For Jesus says this in just a few chapters later, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you will be my disciples, which so far tracks with John chapter eight, right? He says, remain in my love then. And if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. And this is my commandment to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Now, did you notice how Jesus opened up this remaining in Him and in His Word to involve loving others? See, knowing how to love, knowing love, is part of knowing the truth. And nothing takes us out of the realm of mere physical proofs quicker than loving someone else and nothing lands us straight smack dab into the middle of relational ones as quickly as loving does. Hmm. Now it is at this point that things begin to get interesting. Hang on. See, in John 1, it says, This is how we know that we know Him, if we keep His commandments, which opens up a very interesting thought, does it not? See, if we know Him, well, by default, we know Him to be real. And 
as we saw and heard just a little bit ago, this does involve loving both him and others. We're told, for the one who says, I know him, but yet doesn't keep his commandments, well, that person is a flat out liar and the truth isn't in him. But God's love has most certainly been perfected in whoever keeps his word. And this is how we know that we are in him. Is that not fascinating? <laughs> See, now Paul even emphasizes this when he prays that he, meaning God, would grant that you, being rooted and grounded in love, might be strengthened to comprehend with all the saints and to know the fullness of God. Grounded in love in order to comprehend and know the fullness of God. What a simple and yet thoroughly not shallow thought that is. See, to love is to know. To love is to know. Hmm. Back to our original question. So how do you know God is real? Well, my first answer now would be that I know God is real because my love continues to grow. Now, not just my love for Him, mind you, for as we discovered over the last two videos, our love for Him must include love for others. So, I know God is real, not only because my love for Him continues to grow, but also because my love and compassion for the unlovable is growing. See, the more I am able to care for those that by all natural desires and standards, I should utterly despise. Well, the more this relational God is proven to be real. See, in the book of John, Jesus himself says that this is how others will know that he is real and that we are real and authentically followers of him. That we love one another. You know, not if we have religious knowledge. Not if we have a vast store of memorized scripture that we can pull up at any given moment. Not if we have a proper holy sound in our voice. Not sure how holy sounding that was, but you get the idea, right? Yeah. See, it's not even if we have the word Christ or Jesus repeated frequently in all of our songs and music. It is not that we have a thoroughly highlighted Bible that's full of notes. It is not anything else. It is by His love and only by His love that this happens. For it is His love which flows through us and is both returned to Him and passed on to others that we love others as he does is the proof that he is real. Now, much more could be said on this topic. Much, 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 much more. And yes, there are some non-relational things such as, well, deductions that can be made from facts and arguments that can be made logically. There is well, the complexity that's found in the machinery of the human cell. There is the fine-tuning of the universe for life and much, much more which do support God's existence. And it is not my purpose or intent to downplay or disrespect any of this information, for these things are very important to know and to talk about. And yet, I have never found one of these things, any of these things, to be as effective in proving the reality of God as that simple statement made by Jesus, God himself, in John chapter 13. See, his love is the simplest and the most profound proof that anyone can have, know, or offer to others. So, in light of this, love simply, love wisely, love well, and know that God is real. Well, what do you think? 
please tell me in the comments section below. Also, in that description box below, I will list all the Bible passages that I've referenced and in the order that I've referenced them. Well, that way, you can check me out, make sure I'm not making any of this up, and that I'm not totally out in left field. I mean, I am left-handed, but I don't like being out in left field. <laughs> also, if you like this video, please click that like and the subscribe button and then make sure to grab that little gray bell icon that pops up and tell YouTube that you want to be notified each time a new video is posted. Also, now I have something very exciting to announce. We now have a podcast version of this video or any video going from here forward. So you can go to simplenotshallow.com and download the podcast version if you like and take us with you wherever you want to go. You know, while you're driving in your car, while you're walking the dog, anyway, anyhow, anytime. Now, you can also subscribe to this podcast, the Simple Not Shallow podcast, through this podcast service of your choice. You know, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, whichever one you like. Well, thank you. And thank you for listening. Yes, thank you. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> oh, and I'll catch you next time.